In this lesson, we're ready to start adding our tabs and pockets. Now, the idea with this design from the start was that I can send it off to the factory to get cut, and then when I get the pieces back, it'll be easy to snap together. So you don't necessarily have to do this. There's other ways of fixing this, but for this one, I'm going to show you how to create those tabs and pockets that you would need if you want to do that type of design. Now, the first thing I want to do is just switch off some of these sketches. You can see we can still see the sketch here that was part of the top shelf and these sketches that actually drive the spacing of the shelf. So I'm just going to go here to top shelf and switch off my sketch and I'm going to do the same for my main sketches. There we go. Now the next thing I want to do is add a little bit of an overhang here so that when I make a tab from this board that cuts into this spot here it's not sitting on the side here but actually going into it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this and right click and say press pull. I'm going to say 20 millimeters and it's going to be a new offset. Do the same for this one. And the same for this one. Now what happens here is you'll see in the timeline it added these press pull actions at the end. So if anything changes in the parameters, it will go it will make those changes to the original sketch. So it basically here goes back in the timeline to the original sketch, make the changes, it runs forward again, it does all the extrusions, and then it adds another 20 millimeters onto that. So no matter what I do with my sizes, if I change the width for example it will always add another 20 millimeters onto that in the end here which is what I want in this case because it is a parametric design so to create those tabs I'm gonna select this sideboard and it's very important that I activate this because anything that I want to create now I want to be it I want it to be part of this component so I'm gonna activate that select it and right click and then say edit profile sketch it will take me back to that original sketch that I created and zooming in at the top here I'm going to use L a line and I'm just going to create an extrusion like this now I can see that I have 90 degree corners here so I'm happy that everything is straight and now I need to dimension it I'm going to start by dimensioning this part that's fine and then I'm also going to do the overall dimension like this now since I've started making this course there's been an update and one of the things that they added was predictive text when you use parameters so in this case I'm just going to say width and you'll see immediately as I start typing it's looking at the user created parameters and seeing which ones of those I may want to use so it speeds things up a little bit and I don't have to remember all the names that I gave to these parameters so I'm just going to choose that one and say it's that divided by three and then I'm going to select this one double click it and say you are this one divided by 2 and then finally I'm going to add another parameter and this one is going to be the height which is based on the thickness of the plywood okay and stop the sketch and now I still need to extrude this and because I'm now still in this activated side, if I extrude it now, it will be automatically part of this component. So I'm going to try and select, and I can see the top shelf is in the way. So I'm just going to switch that one off. Select it. Extrude. And the extrusion is going to be thickness. And I want to make sure that it joins with the existing one. I'm happy with that. And OK. And if I 
look on the other side because those two are still linked you can see it created it on that side as well let's activate our main one let's do that and in the next lesson I'm going to show you how to create the openings in the top shelf for these tabs